It is amazing how much one book can change your life. We really got started reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It wasn't just the lessons in there. It opened me up to realize that, wow, there is a wildly different way of thinking. It allowed me to see there's so many different ways to do things. And that's why you have your Treehouse book, which is on Amazon. And it's a great way to introduce these things, exactly what you're talking about. How did you get your kids to do this? We didn't get them. We made it fun. Just like you and Devin have your fun books, The Treehouse and The Garage. And when people read those fun books, especially the teenagers, they can start to pick up business principles and learn things like providing value for value, all while still being entertained with you know, the high school drama that goes on. Lila, what do you think some of the most important things are? I think putting it into terms that kids can understand is also a big part of it. That's one of the reasons a fictional book, it can be so much better for them to learn from. They can relate to the characters. They can look at what the characters are doing and see how that can apply to their own life. And usually if it's on a topic that they're interested in, for example, a lot of the kids that talked about woodworking um, were very interested in Ethan's book because it talks about what they did with scrap wood. And so that was one of the things that once I know what a kid is interested in, I can take any lesson and wrap it around their interests so that they want to learn more. And that was the goal of my book, The Treehouse. It was supposed to be a fun story. You know, anyone who read it, Hopefully it highlights their day. It makes them happier. But also there's a couple of lessons in there to help the kids that are learning it. They'll learn those lessons because it's in a fun fictional book. And if they're having fun, they'll want to read more and they'll end up learning more. And we put those lessons in there so they can learn. And that's why Connor Boyack, who wrote the Tuttle Twin series, it's also a fictional series that has, there's a whole bunch of books. I don't even know how many there's, I'm pretty sure there's well over 10 and they all teach great lessons, but they're in a short fictional story so the kids can well understand it. And that's something that I really, I really enjoyed reading those books back when I was, I don't know, six or seven. And I'm pretty sure those have taught me quite a few lessons and maybe they just taught it in a different way. So it stood with me. It resonated with me longer because it was taught in a fun way that I understood better. And that's another thing that we did that you hit on that you really enjoyed. We found Connor's books. I don't know how we found it. I'm sure it was your mother that figured this out because she's still on his mailing list. And we just got an advertisement. Great information. Really good read. We had an entire show talking about many of the things he said in his newsletter. And then it had an advertisement at the bottom for his 13 books in a box. So I'm guessing there's at least 13 in that lower series. And then I know we've got an entire case of his books and your brother loved the teenager ones. And that's what you guys chose to do. Do you remember he had like the law and he simplified the law book down yep. to the children's version? And you yeah, guys yeah. decided to do more of a teenager and you know 20 year old version. So uh, you, you've got to pick, but there's all of these different authors that are writing these alternative things that don't teach you to do exactly the same thing that everybody else in the world does. And if you want to get spectacular results, you can't just follow the norm and do what everybody else does. You've got to try something different, right, Ethan? Right. If you don't try something new, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you keep going to getting the same result. And that's something that we're trying to teach because a lot of people will teach their kids to go to school, get good grades, so you can go to college, so you can get a degree, get a job. But we are questioning that. You've always taught me to question everything. What if there's a better Whoa, 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 whoa. Do I let you question me? Yeah, absolutely. As, you're one of the most important things that I should question. If you tell me to do something and it doesn't make sense or I don't understand it, I really should ask you because what if maybe I know of a better way, especially when it comes to technology, I tend to be able to do a couple more things than you which makes sense because I've grown up with that and I've probably absorbed the most information from that. So whenever we're doing something that's tech related, either Devin and I are really good with that, but we ask you questions. Hey, 
maybe we should try this. This might be better or more efficient. And same thing goes for pretty much everything. I can always ask you questions. First off, why are we doing it this way? Not just, hey, go out and do this. I'm not just learning that I need to do this. I need to learn why are we doing this. I need to develop the thinking, the thought process. That way, when I grow up, I'll have that thought process and I'll be able to answer my own questions. That's one of my favorite fortune cookies, Ethan. When I opened it up, it said the the goal of education is to teach you how to think, not what to think. I wanted you to be able to take a problem and think through it. So that was one of the goals that I had as well. And I I love that because you just said it wonderfully. 